I've recently taken your Understand Myself personality test and scored very low in all aspects of agreeableness. Mm -hmm. I have the cognitive ability to emulate these aspects and do so for the benefit of my kids and community. Yep. Is emulation enough or do I have to actually take the steps in showing, in honestly showing agreeableness? Can you fake uh, it basically? Em well, if, if, if emulation is motivated by, uh, let's call it a noble aim, the understanding that reciprocity is necessary. There is evidence showing that disagreeable people do quite a bit better if they go out of their way to do things for other people. Do they make that a practice? And the thing is, is if, if you're an introvert, you have to become a conscious extrovert, right? If you're, if you're, um, so and if you're disagreeable, you have to become consciously agreeable. You can do it, and emulation is the first step to incorporating it, I would say. So if you're doing it to manipulate people, well, that's a different story. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Man, I mean, there's, there's a ton of people here that donated on Super Chat just to say hi and thank you. So hello to everybody. Um, a quick one for Ben. I think we've already hit this, but any chance of a future discussion with Milo? No. Okay, fair Waste enough. Yeah. Um, I'd rather talk with people who have something to say. Uh, okay, here's an interesting one. And, and Jordan, during the break, mentioned that we should be doing a, a show on the future at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, do you think, like me, that abortion and artificial intelligence will eliminate humanity as we know it? I'm watching this new Philip K. Dick thing on, on uh, Hulu now, so I'm very into oh, it. you can make I'm it through the electric all... drains, sir. Well, we yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it's, I it's... tried it. I, ah, I don't know. I can't get into it. Come on, you can do it. You're a sci-fi guy. Okay. You, you can get there. Well, we could talk about AI. I mean... Yeah. AI is going to transform what human beings are dramatically. We're going to have to decide in what manner we want to be transformed. And we should bloody well hope and pray that the people who are leading the technological revolution are careful and ethical people. But and don't, that's, don't, hasn't that ship sailed? I mean, I feel like we know already that that's not how it's going to be. We know there's so many problems related to the diversity memo and the algorithms and all that already from the tech companies. Sure, that's but there's lots fear. of people working on these. Oh, you should, be, you should be terrified of this transhumanism. It's like, what do we want to turn into? We need a vision of the future, which is why we need to talk about the future. Yeah. What, I think one of the things we need to do collectively is to develop. It's like, okay, I believe that the human race can do anything it wants in the next 30 years. You know, Gates was talking, Bill Gates was talking the other day about eradicating malaria. He's, he's really set on eradicating the five major transmissible diseases. That could happen. Yeah. It's like we could eliminate most of our problems. It's like, well, we should concentrate on the future that we would like to have and try to bring it into being. And then maybe we can get artificial intelligence to serve that instead of serving whatever inchoate and pathological set of principles that it's serving now which we will suffer for. Yeah, well, let's cross our fingers. Uh, what is the likelihood that the SJW postmodern left collapse uh, will happen soon, basically? Um, I think that it's more likely than people think it is. I'll put it that way. I think that oh, right nice. now the, the SJWs think that they're on top and they think that they are ascendant. And I think the, the growing popularity of people who are not that Especially among young people. I mean, my entire audience is young people. Like, yeah. Legitimately, my entire audience is people who are under the age of 40, and probably half my audience is under the age of 25. And I would I'd probably imagine it's the same for you, Jordan. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I think that the, there's a, the whole group of young people who are just looking at this stuff and innately saying, I'm bored with it. There's mm -hmm. nothing here. And so I, I think there's a good shot that, that the identity politics is actually an older person's game. Yeah. Uh, all right. You know, we're, we're only going to do two more. We'll, we'll categor, uh, categorize all of these and maybe and next time you guys are on, we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. hit, we'll hit some of these. Um, but we'll do two more because I, I think they're good. They sort of hit right where we're going here. Uh, I, you both can answer this, but it's directed to you, Jordan. Uh, any follow up on your call earlier this month for students to stand up and leave the classroom whenever the teacher mentions equity, diversity, and justice? And I know this is something you've talked about a bit about how you deal with yeah, college yeah. professors. Yeah, this approaches. was for junior high and high school kids yeah. to talk to their parents about. Well, I was trying to provide people with easy markers to note that their children are being indoctrinated and not educated. And I said, well, if they talk about equity, diversity, inclusivity, white privilege, or gender, it's time to leave the class. And, I, and now, that had, didn't cause nearly as much trouble, that video, as I thought it might. <laughs> yeah, that, you know? I mean, that's a pretty dangerous idea to be telling that to a 13, 14-year-old Yes, kid. yes, but it's also dangerous not to tell them that. And I mean, it's particularly germane in Ontario, where the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario has explicitly developed a social justice curriculum with that name, whose explicit purpose is to transform kids from kindergarten to grade eight into social justice activists. They've even bent the selection of literature to promote that. So they're perverting art for ideology. And that's the official policy of the Elementary Teachers Federation of Ontario. If they're gonna do that, play that game, then for me to say, look, here's five phrases that, that are pretty decently diagnostic. You can be pretty certain that if these topics come up in your class, that you're now into indoctrination territory. 
yeah, I think people should walk. What's the risk, though, of saying that to a kid that may come home and the parents may not even understand these issues enough to, to defend it's them? Risk, risk everywhere, man. It's, it's, it's the risk of going along with it. There's the risk of standing up against it. And I believe, and, and that's why I've been doing what I've been doing, is that I believe that the risk of stating that this is dangerous and should stop is way less than the risk of going along with it. I'm with so. you. All right, so this is, gonna be, this is gonna be the last one for now. We will pick this up at another point. And we also discussed during the break that maybe we can do some kind of live thing together fun, with, yeah. with this whole crew of, of people that we're talking about. We'll see who we can get to do that probably in LA, but we'll see. Uh, this one, I'm sure I've asked you some form of this uh, in our other interviews before, but I think it's, it's the one that sort of hands this back to the, to the audience. Uh, for both of you, for some time now, I've wanted to start doing something to protect liberty and Western values, et cetera, but I have no idea where to start. What's the most useful thing I can do to start as an average person? I mean, I think that it, my, my answer to this is sort of the same answer as to what you should just do in life generally. Find something that you're good at, find something you like to do, and find something that's useful. And where those three things con conflate, well, where those three things overlap, that's where you're gonna be the happiest and that's where you're gonna feel you're making a difference. Because if you only have two of those three things, then you're butting your head against a brick wall. If you like to do something and you think that it's gonna influence other people but you suck at it, <laughs> it's not gonna work for you. Yeah. So try to openly identify your own skill set. Find what it is that you're good at and then figure how do I use this skill set, something I'm good at and enjoy doing, how do I use that for a purpose that is that is useful? And it sounds like this, you already have your purpose. It's just a question of what can you do that, that actually helps effectuate that purpose. So I, without knowing your skill set, I don't know. But if I knew your skill set, then I could help define what you could do with that to get from point A to point B. Yeah, so I suspect you probably well, agree yeah. with well, that. But what I mean, about would, the courage well, part? Well, I would just yeah. add a little bit to that. It's like there are some things that you'll see that will bother you. Some of those are your problems. That's why they bother you. Like there's lots of things in the world that are happening that don't bother you. It's like they're not your problems. Yeah. The things that bother you for some reason are your problems. Find something that bothers you that you could fix, that you could start fixing and start fixing it. That's, that's it, and, and you know, you should do it yeah. competently. Mm -hmm. Do it in a domain where you're competent. Do that it in a domain where you're interested. But there are things that you'll see around you that you think could be set right that you could set right. It's like. Go for it. You'll get good at it, and then you'll set bigger and bigger things right. That's and that's that's where to start. Start small. You yeah. won't end small. I mean, I can tell you in the most intimate way, as you guys are now in my house, in my studio that we built, that's funded by the people that are watching mm. this. I just had an idea, and I started talking about it. I started a YouTube channel that literally everyone watching this can do. Mm -hmm. You start. I mean, look at the three of us. Mm -hmm. We all started putting stuff out there, going, "Is this going to work?" None mm. of us were greenlit. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been greenlit or had any respect from the industry altogether. Listen, guys, it was a pleasure. We're gonna let you, you, what do you do before a show? You can take a nap, maybe? Or? I'm definitely going to take a nap. Yeah, you, you don't take naps. Does Ben Shapiro uh, take I naps? I take naps, yeah. You take naps? Yeah, I have two kids. They're both uh, under, I mean, one just turned four. Yes, I take naps. Fair <laughs> enough. <laughs> All right, yeah, fair enough. Right. It's, it's been a pleasure, guys. Let, we'll figure out some ways to expand this to the wider group yep. and do some live events and everything else. Sounds great. And we'll, we'll keep this conversation going. Speaking of the Lexus, where did the 50 grand come to just drop? Oh, Cordy gave it to me for uh, blowing away Cobain. Oh, oh, I can't believe I just slipped up like that. Oh, God. And here's the greatest thing. I'll never be tried or convicted for the murders of Kurt Cobain or Elder Jay. Never. But uh, I told Alan, I mean, uh, my friend, who... <laughs>